Today we're diving into a paper that explores a new architecture for transformers called the Kolmogorov Arnold Transformer, or KET. This paper proposes replacing the traditional multi-layer perceptron MLP layers in transformers with Kolmogorov Arnold Network, CAN layers. What are the key advantages of using CAN layers in transformers? The main advantage of using CAN layers is their potential for increased expressiveness and efficiency. CANs are theoretically more parameter efficient than MLPs, meaning they can model complex functions with fewer parameters. This could lead to more compact and computationally efficient transformer models. That sounds promising. However, the paper highlights some challenges in integrating CAN layers into transformers, particularly when scaling up to large models. Can you elaborate on these challenges? Yes, there are three main challenges. First, the standard B spline function used in CANs is not optimized for parallel computing on modern GPUs, leading to slower inference speeds. Second, CANs require a unique function for each input-output pair, resulting in a large number of parameters and computational overhead. Third, initializing the weights in CANs is challenging due to their learnable activation functions, which are crucial for achieving convergence in deep neural networks. So the paper proposes solutions to address these challenges. Can you explain the proposed solutions? The paper proposes three key solutions. First, they replace B-spline functions with rational functions, which are more compatible with modern GPUs and can be implemented efficiently in CUD. Second, they introduce a group CAN approach where activation weights are shared among groups of neurons, reducing the computational load without sacrificing performance. Third, they propose a variance-preserving initialization scheme for the activation weights, ensuring stability during training and improving the model's learning dynamics. These solutions seem to address the core challenges. How does the paper combine these solutions to create the CAT architecture? The paper combines these solutions to create a new variant of CAN called Group Rational CAN, GRCAN. This GRCAN layer replaces the MLP layers in the transformer architecture. The paper demonstrates that GRCAN is computationally efficient, easy to implement, and can be seamlessly integrated into vision transformers. The paper claims that CAT outperforms traditional MLP-based transformers, what evidence do they provide to support this claim? The paper presents experimental results on various vision tasks, including image recognition, object detection, and semantic segmentation. They show that CAT consistently outperforms traditional MLP-based transformers, achieving enhanced performance with comparable computational requirements. For example, they report that CAT-B achieves 82.3% accuracy on ImageNet-1K, surpassing the VIT model of the same size by 3.1%. That's a significant improvement. Can you elaborate on the specific benefits of using rational functions as the base function in CAN layers? Rational functions offer several advantages over beast blinds. First, they are computationally efficient for large-scale models because evaluating polynomials involves simple operations that are highly suitable for parallel computing. Second, rational functions can approximate a wider range of functions, including those with singularity or sharp variations, more efficiently and accurately than polynomials. Third, Rational activations have already been successfully used as activation functions in neural networks. The paper also mentions a CUDA implementation for the rational function. What are the benefits of this implementation? The CUDA implementation significantly improves the computational efficiency of the rational function. By leveraging the parallel processing capabilities of GPUs, it reduces the time required to evaluate the function making it more suitable for large-scale models. The group can approach is another key innovation. Can you explain how this approach reduces computational overhead? The group can approach shares parameters among groups of edges, reducing the number of parameters and computations. Instead of learning a unique base function for each input-output pair, it shares parameters within a group of edges, significantly reducing the computational load. 
The paper also emphasizes the importance of variance preserving initialization for the activation weights. Why is this crucial for training deep neural networks? Variance preserving initialization ensures that the variance of the signal remains constant as it propagates through multiple layers. This helps to maintain stability during training and improves the model's learning dynamics. Without proper initialization, the activation magnitudes can grow or shrink excessively, leading to instability and degraded performance. The paper mentions that CAT can be initialized with pre-trained weights from VIT models. How does this approach contribute to the model's performance? Transfer learning from pre-trained VIT models allows CAT to leverage the knowledge learned from a large dataset. This approach can significantly improve the model's performance, especially when training on smaller datasets or when resources are limited. The paper presents ablation studies to evaluate the impact of different activation functions and initialization schemes. What are the key findings from these studies? The ablation studies show that the proposed gr ken architecture with rational functions and group-based parameter sharing significantly outperforms traditional activation functions like RELU and GELU. They also demonstrate the importance of variance-preserving initialization for achieving stable training and improved performance. The paper concludes by discussing potential future directions for research. What are some of the key areas for future exploration? Future research could focus on exploring alternative base functions for CAN layers, expanding the applicability of CAT to other domains beyond vision tasks, investigating hybrid models that combine CAN and MLP layers, and addressing the remaining scalability challenges particularly in terms of memory footprint and inference speed. This was a fascinating discussion on the Kolmogorov-Arnold transformer. Thank you for sharing your insights.